Hello and welcome to another episode of Dollar Store Surgery. In this video we explain step by step how to simulate a balloon angioplasty or clearing a blocked artery with the balloon. This simulation challenges students to solve a difficult medical problem. We also seek to develop an entrepreneurial mindset in our students that identifies medical product opportunities. A slightly quirky student version of all episodes are available as well. All of the simulation materials you need are listed at the end of each instructor video. Now let's go to the lab and get started. A plumber snake is going to be necessary to clear this blockage. And we'll make the blockage, you can use a variety of things. What I do is I take a plastic baggie and some toothpaste or you can use um, peanut butter, both will be fine and they will create a sufficient blockage that will challenge your students. Now, how do we use the uh, snake? The key is this. If you put pieces of string on the snake, you can then guide this thing to move in different directions. Put a piece of string there, put a piece of string there, and I can get this thing to do my bidding, if you will. And now, what is our tortuous path? And the way that I've built this is that I've got this curved tube here, this can be bought at any hardware store. Uh, and then a T connection and a 22 and a half degree connection. You can use whatever connectors you wish. I think it's really important for the students to be able to see what they're doing. And so I used clear tubing here. And these tubes, it turns out, are used to dispose of fluorescent uh, bulbs, those long fluorescent tubes. You put them inside of these devices here, you step on them, and they break, and then you, you pour out the, the uh, little bits of glass that are left over. It's a safe way to, just to get rid of those uh, gas-charged tubes. And so these work really well because they fit inside these connectors, and you can see what's going on inside. So let's go ahead and insert our snake inside of the tube. And as we do that, let me grab a hold of this just right here. And as we put this inside, you're going to feed it inside of the snake. And as it goes in, eventually you'll see it start showing up. Ah, there it is right there. And I can now adjust this. Oops, i be careful here. I can adjust its position inside the tube where it wants to go into a uh, different direction. You can see it. I'm pulling on it right there. So as I insert it all the way up, then the goal is to then make this turn by rotating the snake and pulling on the strings until I can kind of bend it. And the snake will actually bend very similar to when you set a hook on a uh, fishing pole and you crank back on it and it bends over. Right? So that's how you get the, the uh, snake inside of the tube. Now how do we clear the blockage? Well, first of all, I put the blockage, once they prove to me that their device works, at the end over here. And then I put uh, the, the plastic bag filled with uh, toothpaste or peanut butter down inside. I tape it in place, and you'll see some video on that later. As far as uh, inflating the balloon, and that's the key here, we put a balloon on the end of a tube, and the tube is connected to the snake. And the tube is simply a piece of clear tubing that we attach like this with some zip ties, thread that through, and then I happen to use just a little air syringe to try and pump this thing up and it clears the blockage. And that's all there is to it. Here we are in the lab and everyone's getting ready and organized with their materials. They typically work in groups of two or three. One person cannot perform the simulation alone. And as with all surgical simulations, Hand-eye coordination and teamwork are critical for success. Here these students are fitting the balloon over the end of the tube. Here they're tying the string onto the snake. And then you'll see them guiding the snake along the tube. Uh, this view here shows a challenging 90 degree turn from an end view that requires the snake to be in a certain position so that the strings will pull in the proper direction. Typically one person advances the snake and turns it, others control the strings. Once past the 90 degree turn, the snake can be advanced to the end of the path, and it is this last tube that will ultimately be filled with the blockage. It's probably best if you try to get to the end without the blockage in place. It makes it easier to see what you're doing. And you can see that the blockage fills up a decent amount of the tube interior. It's easiest if you start with the balloon at the far end of the blockage, and then inflate, pull back one inch, inflate, and repeat that process until the blockage has been flattened out into the plastic bag. Now by this point we have probably been working for over an hour and everyone's excited and relieved to have ultimately solved the problem. 
it can get a little frustrating. Here is a side view and then we're going to switch to an end view and you can see there's the snake on the lower left and of course the balloon on the upper right and the balloon is kind of wrapping around the snake to flatten out the blockage. You may wonder what a real medical device looks like that can turn corners inside of an artery and here it is. You can see how it bends just like the snake did. It can bend but only in one direction similar to how the string can only pull the snake in one, one direction. Once past a turn it can straighten out again. Sometimes a metal mesh stent is expanded into position by the balloon to permanently hold the blockage in place. Stents are made in a variety of diameters and lengths to accommodate any artery or length of blockage in the body.